I wake up every minute with the fever dreams I put some mind to a limit where it needs to be Don't work by God, vision, I don't need to see I'm picking mind over matter, I believe in me I need to find more hours in the day to breathe Need to find more power in the way I be And when my mind turns out with the painful scenes I need to scream out loud, I can't stop me I wanna be the greatest like Rocky You know I leave them all hate like a hobby I'm out here making moves like a lobby And if you ain't with me, it's you lost, see I got my mind on the facts, I'm a python Grab what I like real fast, took it till I have everything I attack Everything that I lack, everything that I want And I see matter of fact What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be all about the SRT4 Neon. I've worked on it a lot since you guys last seen it. I think the last video I put out was uh, pulling the turbo kit and some of the engine apart. And I want to show you guys everything that I've been doing, walk you through it. Because right now we're in the process of painting the engine bay so i'm gonna walk you guys through it um, step by step of what i did what you'll need to do if you're looking to do this to any of one of your cars as a project um, i'm going to show you guys what you need to get it done and walk you through everything one by one so hang in there with me we'll get to everything first off i'm going to show you just all the parts I've got everything pretty much just laid out in the shop here. It kind of looks like a mess. Um, I haven't sold anything from the original turbo kit or any of the original parts I have because I want to kind of get it built. That way, if I need anything as spare parts to get this other kit on and everything else together, um, then I'll have it rather than just get rid of it and then have to buy a new one or whatever. Um, I don't think I'll need to use anything because they're two totally different kits and I'm cleaning the engine bay up a ton. It's getting all new suspension parts besides coilovers because the coilovers aren't that old. Um, but everything else I'm pretty much buying brand new. Um, everything's getting cleaned up such as like the wiring harness. I'm going, go I'm going to go through the wiring harness that is connected to the fuse box because you cannot replace that one. You got to use a factory one. Uh, because it is connected to the fuse box which goes to the PCM but all the other engine harnesses there's three total are getting replaced with a new kinetic, kinetic harness um, so I'm going to go through the harness clean all that up make sure it's all tied up nicely with brand new um, wrap on it I don't know what exactly I'm going to use on the wiring harness yet besides the electrical tape I might buy some black loom to go around it just to make it look nice or make it look brand new again. But there's going to be a ton of stuff that I'm going to be doing to this car as I'm putting it back together slowly by piece by piece. So I'm going to show you guys all the parts right now see, so you guys can tell how much of a mess I have. So this is all the brand new turbo kit stuff. This is all the old that I took out and then all the old intercooler. All the radiator and everything. This is the subframe to the car with the power steering and everything on it. You can just tell how many miles and how much oil and gunk is just on this thing. Like it's caked up. So I'll be tearing this apart. I'm gonna take the rack off of it, the steering rack. It's gonna get newer inner and outer tie rods on it, new control arms, cause they're, I mean, there's nothing really wrong with them they're just really beat up and they're starting to surface rust and bubble up. So this is the point now, this is the time now to go through and just clean all this stuff up. Um, how I'm gonna clean this up is I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna tear the rack off of it. It's just held on by four bolts. So I'll tear the rack off of it. I'll go outside. I'm gonna use some gunk is what they call it. It comes in a blue and orange can. It's great for a degreaser. And you pretty much just soak it on there, let it sit for five or 10 minutes and pressure wash it off and it almost looks brand new. So um, this just needs to be cleaned up. I thought about painting this, but I don't know if I wanna do that because it probably will get scratched up underneath the car, but it would look cool 
building it and going through it and making it all nice and new again. So I might get that powder coated. I might paint it myself. I haven't decided yet. But all the, new, all the old AC system is right here um, and some of the brake line system. AC has to come out of this car for the intercooler to fit. So all the AC stuff is taken out. Power steering we can keep, which is nice. And then the old, the fuse box harness, some of the old harnesses that we're replacing. So this is the box where I was talking about where I'm gonna go through and wire loom it and just rewrap everything to make it look brand new because it is gonna take up most of the engine bay on the driver's side. So I wanna make that look nice and new. Uh, I've got all of our suspension stuff, some of the knuckles with the, the wheel bearings, which I've got new wheel bearings in. They finally came in, so it's getting the um, extended studs, um, so new studs, and then wheel bearing, and then your um, kit. I bought it all as a kit, so it makes it real easy. So we got all that brand new. That'll start going on once I get all that stuff in. Not really worried about anything right now as far as getting the engine bay done. So we got the engine and transmission pulled out of this thing. So it's gonna be a lot of cleaning up. This thing is just, it's dirty, it's filthy. So once I get the engine bay done and the paint is drying on the engine bay, I'm going to um, tape all the holes off I'm going to degrease it just like I'm degreasing the, the subframe with the steering rack on it um, and see how well I can get this thing cleaned up. I know the block is black from the factory. Um, I'm going to eventually pull the transmission off because I'm really curious to see what type of clutch is in here because it didn't feel like factory. I think somebody's put a clutch in it before. So I'm curious to see what clutch is in it, but it is slipping now, so we need to replace that once this goes back in the car. So between now and going back in the car, it needs replaced anyways. So I'll pull it off because now is the time to do it since it's out of the car. It just needs a lot of TLC and cleaning up. I want to go through here um, and clean everything up. Paint like this bracket that holds the motor, the side bracket in. Um, some of the motor mounts need to be replaced. So that's another thing, the big issue. This was a fourth mount, and this actually bolts onto the side of the motor right here inside the frame of the, the engine bay, and this is just shot. I was no wonder why I was having so much rattling and stuff inside that engine bay, because that thing is just shredded. And some of the other mounts, the bushings in them need replaced. I thought about just buying new mounts. They need painted anyways, just because they're so beat up. I'll show you guys what those look like. Um, they're not pretty at all. This is the top mount. It's just old and dingy. You know, somebody could actually paint this up and make it nice again. You could buy kits to where you just replace the bushings in it for like 90 bucks. But I'm just going to go ahead and buy uppers and lowers and new fourth mount, obviously, because that one definitely needs replaced. So we're just going to be slowly piece piecing this thing together once I get the bay finished. So now we're going to be moving on to what the engine bay looks like and I'm going to walk you guys through my thought process on this and how to get you guys to understand what what it takes to do something like this it's a really big job you guys just saw all the parts there's a lot of parts a lot of people freak out because they just they don't think they can do any of this but you got to think of it as just nuts and bolts keep track of everything you have write it down whatever you need to do take pictures uh, but if you know how to take it apart, it's just that easier putting it back together because you're doing it yourself. So it's not as difficult as what you would think, but it is a lot of work. I think I have a total of 12 hours from pulling everything out in the engine and the transmission. And once that got out, everything else was easy. So now the engine bay, it is totally gutted. Obviously I've got the shifter cables just hanging in there. I'm not gonna take those out because I'm not gonna really put paint all the way back in there. I'm just gonna wrap it all up. The lines, brake lines, there is a, a vacuum line that goes back to the tank. Fuel line is connected all in this. I just pretty much dropped it from all the way back from the tank to here. 
uh, because the fuel line we are going to be replacing anyways because we've got a brand new AN fitting, a feed and a return system going on this car. So that's going to get, get rid of. Um, and then there's a wiring harness that goes to the, the tank as well for your pump and all that stuff. So um, the brake lines, I'm really debating on just taking those out and replacing them with copper. I think copper, the way the color of this car is going to go, um, in the engine bay right now, I think copper would look really, really sharp in it. So, and it's a little bit easier to make and bend and do all that stuff rather than steel because you can pretty much bend it by your hand and then you can make new ones all the way through because these are starting to rust out in certain points is the main reason why I want to do it. Um, and then obviously you do steel, steel braided lines from the wheel wells to your, to your calipers. So, but everything is pretty much gutted um, obviously you got the heater core system. I'm not going to take those out. I'll just end up taping those off. Um, not a big deal. This is the block for your AC. So I'll end up taping that off as well. Not a big deal for that either. These are just going to get tucked up on top or actually I might just shove them back in there because I'm going to be back taping that wall anyways. There's a cover that goes over that for the wires. So that all get tucked in there out of the way. Um, cap for your steering rack that's going to just get taped up so once i got everything out of here i wish i would have took a video of it but i did not because i was in a hurry and i just wanted to get this stuff done and onto the paint process but it did not look this clean in here obviously the factory collar was silver ps2 from chrysler so it's still silver but i'm telling you from the back of the rack all the way up to about right here was nothing but black. It just had so much gunk and rotar and just oil and grease everywhere on this um, engine bay. And that was pretty much the why I went ahead and just pulled the motor because if you guys watched one of the videos I made before, before even starting to tear this thing apart, um, I was just going to put the custom turbo kit on it, enjoy it for the summer, and then once I got downtime, pull everything out and paint the engine bay and do what I want to do and clean it all up then. But once I got pretty much down to the wire and looking at um, everything, when it was just the motor and transmission sitting here with the subframe, I noticed how dirty it was and it was just driving me nuts. So that's when I decided to pretty much tear everything apart. The wife helped me a little bit to pull the motor and transmission out of it. She wants to learn some of this as too. So I've been walking her through some of this stuff um, to get her to learn. But it is really, really cleaned up now. Um, it's almost, it's, I mean, obviously it's still not nice. There's still a lot of paint chips. There's like surface rust here. I mean, there's little things here and there, but I pretty much took a red scotch right and I wet it down with some wax or grease remover and I just started going to town on scuffing. I took an old pad because obviously it's not going to do anything. I was just trying to get the gunk off of it to clean it up. And once I got that pretty much cleaned and wiped down, I took a, my wife and I took some more scotch brights and just went to town and getting in all the nooks and crannies and just going through here and just sanding it as well as we could. Obviously, they don't paint these engine bays from the factory um, with clear. They just kind of let the overspray of the silver hit it um, so they're not fully painted. So scuffing it and shooting it is what all you pretty much need to do, but since this thing is so scratched up, um, I will be taking some 400 i've got 400 on a da and once i get everything scuffed i'm going to go around and i'm just going to buzz all this stuff down and make it all smooth it's going to take all the paint off of it pretty much all this surface rust in here is all going to go away and i'm just going to start buzzing everything down this black i don't know who painted this black but they don't come to the factory like this it's all supposed to be silver somebody spray painted it so i'm going to be stripping pretty much all this off getting it all down to where it can get sealed and then base coat and clear coat 
and we're gonna make this thing stand out. So, just a little up to date on what I've done. That's pretty much where I'm at right now is uh, scuffing it, sanding it, getting it prepped, and then we can get it taped up and cleaned and ready for paint. Painting this thing won't take me probably about 30 minutes to paint this. It won't take long at all. Once everything's taped up and cleaned, it's pretty much, you know, no time at all. But another thing that's probably pretty obvious, if you guys have neons, you'll probably notice this before I even say anything. But there's a big hole from here all the way to here missing. I ended up, what I did was I cut the hole, I mocked the motor up. And then I mocked the turbo kit to the motor is what I'm trying to say. Because it has a um, cowl exit exhaust, I went ahead and I cut the holes out for the exhaust. And it looked decent. I was pretty happy with it. Um, and then I started looking at custom cars and some SRTs that are drag race only cars. They've done this to a lot of them. A lot of guys will get rid of this whole tray back here. Um, and I did not. I have a reason for that. But I pretty much just cut this big old square out of it because um, I'm going to be running a plexiglass uh cow up here and my reason for that is since i'm cleaning all this up i want people to be able to look down in here you know the hood's going to come like right here so you got this room or nothing but see through now most of it over here is going to be the exhaust um, and a lot of it's going to be the exhaust dumps coming out the cow but everything else is going to look brand new so i want people to be able to look inside of here and see and just see how clean it actually will be once it's totally finished. Now, the reason why I only went down to right here was because the motor for your wiper arm sit right here. So I did not want to get rid of my wipers because I do want to drive it. Obviously, it'll probably be dr get driven in the rain and everything else. It's not going to be totally like a show car or drag car. So I wanted to keep the wipers, so I'm not going to cut that off. And those wiper motor bolts right here so if you want to keep your wipers you can't really cut this off i thought about just cutting this down to over here and keeping this but this is so flimsy that that's probably not going to work either so i went ahead and just kept some of it now we're going to paint all this inside of here make it all look nice i've been back here scuffing it that's why there's so much dirt back here but I've been back there scuffing it, getting it ready for paint because it's going to be just as slick as everything else inside of here. So, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at right now, guys. Um, not too crazy when you're doing this. Obviously, you need to get to the point of everything out of the vehicle. Um, I've painted engine bays before where people didn't want to pull the motors and everything else. And it's just it's not fun at all. It's not fun for the person doing it. And it's not really a clean job. There's a lot of taping off. You're going to see stuff that you didn't get to get um, because motors are tightly snug in a lot of cars. In this car, they're really snug in here. So there's just no other way to do it besides pulling everything out and just getting down to the nitty gritty and getting your hands dirty and doing it. Um, you'll be happy when it's done a lot better off than if you would just tape everything off. I've seen a lot of guys, especially with these cars, they'll pull like pretty much everything out besides the subframe, some of the wiring and the engine, and they'll just wrap it in plastic um, and then they'll paint it. And then when they pull everything off, you can see where all the, the paper and everything hit. And it's just, it makes it a mess. It's not really a clean job. Um, I don't recommend it. Um, I'm to the point of my career that if you don't want me to actually fully take things apart on your car then i'm just not going to do it i just don't want to have the hassle of it because it's going to peel it's going to chip a lot easier um, everything needs to be folded around type spots so when you don't take stuff off it creates that hard edge line and it's going to peel one day so and it just doesn't look as good to be honest with you and you know if you're paying a lot of money to get something done just go ahead and do it the right way. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And the other thing, a little bit of a trick um, 
that I'm going to be doing on some of this stuff. Now, when I tape all this off, I'm pretty much just gonna be taping. I'm gonna follow this nasty seam sealer from the factory, and I'm just gonna be following around here, and I'm gonna be just hard lining it right here because everything else is gonna go the same color. All this inside of here is going to get painted. All this green on this outside is gonna get collar blown on it. Um, and things like this, because since I have to tuck this inside there, what I'm gonna do, another little trick for engine bays, um, instead of just using paper, plastic, and tape, a lot of tape, what you do is you go buy, uh, you can either buy saran wrap, or you can buy aluminum foil. And you aluminum foil all this stuff, makes your life a lot easier. That's what I'm gonna do to the uh, shifter cables. And I'm gonna do that to the some of the brake lines and stuff to keep them clean. And what that does is aluminum foil is really easy to work with and it holds things together really nice. And you can just crinkle it the way you need it. So it makes things a lot easier in engine bays to tape off rather than using a ton of tape to tape all that off. So that's just a little trick um, that you can do if you're working on tight spots that need something that needs to be tightly on there before you paint something that's a little trick but that's pretty much it guys i mean there's not much going on obviously it's, everything's out of it so i'm going to get to sanding on this thing get this thing pretty much prepped up taped um the whole car will get taped same way on this side is going to happen on this side you know i'm just going to follow this nasty liner all the way around here Hard line it down there. I'm gonna let overspray blow all inside of here. Um, I might go through here and sand some of this flat um, and get some of this. That way the paint's gonna stick on it. I might just scuff it real quick, but it doesn't look bad in here. It's still pretty solid. Uh, the chip guard and stuff they use from the factory is still in there pretty nice. So, but I'm just gonna let everything blow on. I'll scuff all this, sand it all down. But everything else, I'll just let it kind of just dust it on there. And then I might go back over it with this. Um, some new chip guard. Black chip guard. Or rhino lining. One of the two. I haven't figured it out yet. And just do this hole inside. That way rocks and everything else doesn't chip everything up. And it's just a little bit more durable. So I'm going to get back to it. And get this thing sanded. Get it prepped up. And then we're going to be slinging some paint, so stay tuned.